Okay, so we have uh, round two with Dr. Capizzi, Dr. P Peter Capizzi at Capizzi MD here in Charlotte today. Welcome back. Hey, welcome everyone. Thank you I'm so glad much. Glad to be back, Lauren. Yes. So we had a couple of follow-up questions from my last video. Um, if you haven't checked it out, I'll put it in the next uh, slide so you can, guys can watch that. Uh, but we're just going to start off with a couple of things uh, following up from the last video. We covered all kinds of topics, uh, breast implant illness, different types of breast implants, um, over and under the muscle, recovery time, all kinds of good stuff. Um, but one of the questions I had was from one of um, my followers that I'm really good friends with who asked me a question if I wouldn't mind asking you. And I'm just going to read it straight from her because it's kind of long. So she said, if you um, do another question with the doctor or another, another session with the doctor, could you ask him about recommended replacement? So she says she had silicone implants done in 1981, but then there was a silicone scare um, in 1993, so she replaced them with saline implants. She said she has no, uh, she's had these implants for 26 years and has had no issues, but she's wondering if she should simply just have them replaced now due to age factor of the implants. So thoughts on that um, from her? Yeah, I think a lot of people, uh, she's amongst thousands of other women that have had saline implants placed back in 1992 or the early 90s uh, because of the, the silicone concerns, um, which as of date, you know, there's no, no data to, su to support those concerns. So people have switched back to silicone. And a lot of uh, people that I do the exchanges on are people that have had saline implants for 10, 20, you know, 30, 40 years. And uh, the biggest change I think that they see or improvement is the feel. The, they also have this one breast feel, meaning you can't really tell or it's hard to tell the difference between the breast and the actual implant. With saline implants, they feel like a usually a uh, like a bag of like water. A bag of water. I felt a, a friend of mine's before and just press yeah. on it, and it felt kind of crinkly, a little yeah. bit. Is that kind of typical? Very typical. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, if someone's had implants, like your friend has had for 20 years, um, what you'll see is that the implant goes down and then they go to the side. So they have a wider space or flatter space in the middle, which um, ideally that can be all corrected on the exchange. So most people would, would say, you know, if you feel like you want to improve things, exchange them. Um, obviously there's nothing uh, critical or emergent or urgent uh, for her to do so, but the implants today are so much better. They have lifetime right. warranty. There's no warranty on that saline implant. So safety-wise, she's okay, but it's probably just going to improve her overall look, feel, and experience with having them. Absolutely. Start replacing them. Oh, okay. absolutely. Okay. So, great. So, that hopefully that answers uh, your question. And then the other questions I got today, um, one was, what are your thoughts on, uh, forgive me for the pronunciation of this, but it looks like it's Galatia mesh. Oh, as Galflex. Support. Okay. Galflex mesh as support That's for under the breast. So, what are his thoughts on supporting, uh, or the mesh... Um, underneath the implant, I guess, for support. So go ahead and give us your feedback on that. Well, it, it, implants run from 200, around 200 cc's to 850 cc's cool. in the U.S. Okay. So um, small implants, small issues, meaning mm -hmm. a lot less to have any complications related to a smaller implant. What I mean by that is rule of thumb is anything greater than 450 is considered large. So if you consider 450, that's almost 450 cc's is 450 grams is about one pound. So that's when I start to think about, hey, is this person's skin or tissue have enough mm -hmm. strength to support a pound? And if you're a woman that has a lot of stretch marks on your skin, mm -hmm. or if you had a child and your breast got to size double D, triple D, and now they're a B and have a lot of excess skin, that skin, I've got to think, take into consideration, hey, is it going to be a rock and a sock? Mm. And if you yeah. have that idea, mm -hmm. then mesh would be something I'd want to add to that. And that's this. So Galaflex is a resorbable mesh. It is made out of a suture material. Uh, lasts about 12 to 18 months. So it's not going to absorb like in three days. But it dissolves. And it dissolves. Oh, and I this did is not it. even know. So it, this it's existed. shaped like this. Okay. So it would actually support your breast and the implant mm -hmm. in its position. It does come in a sheet as well, and I use that as well. But it's used to help support implants, support the breast and breast lifts, and also support the crease, and that's really important. Okay.
Good to know. So, so for example, some people who may have like a li like lesser tissue amounts, maybe or may leave from like a show or competitors, for example, would that be a good option for them? If they come to you like pretty show lean and there's not yeah. a lot of fat there, is that what this would yeah. be used for? So what happens is when this is gone, this is probably how much would you say? How thick is that? I don't know. A like millimeter? Barely. Yeah. Yeah. So it will leave tissue, your own tissue, in its place about two to three millimeters thicker. Oh, okay. And five times stronger. So people say, hey, when this is gone, is there anything left? Well, yeah, it's your own tissue and it's about five times stronger. It's improved. So yeah. Because it was going around that. So I definitely yeah. have used this. I typically, most often, use it as a recovery thing as opposed to something that is uh, recommended at the first stage. Okay. Um, but you can, especially in the heavier implants. Like every now and then I have women that will ask, I want to have a 700 cc implant. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's a that's a big implant, and you've got to think like, hey, I really want this person to have a good appearance for a long time, right. not just for six weeks. Right. Yeah. Well, especially so, when they settle and come back down. Right. I mean, I know that gravity my, is going that way. Yeah, it works. I know that from my own experience. Mine are about a year ago, like about right now, probably about this time last year. So they've changed a lot since then. So I mean, yeah, like you're right. You can't just judge it on the, even the first six months, even really, of what the final look will be. Right. Um, Okay, cool. So the next question I had was, is there a size chart? This is kind of kind of tail spinning off of what we just talked about. I guess I'm, I'm not sure if this exists, but is there a size chart that recommends what body weight, height, whatever for like implant size, like as far as like safety and longevity of that? Is that something that exists? No, okay. not for a size okay. chart for that. Okay, that's an easy question or easy answer to that question. Okay. I can tell you the most important measurement is the width of your breast okay. so when we measure when I measure that width will correspond to an implant diameter mm -hmm. and if you honor the diameter of the implant and the breast width you'll have most often 99 times out of 100 get to where you want to go okay cool so just we're gonna be looking at the width of that so um, the other question was is there a test that you can run or anything like that for breast implant illness today no, there's no single test for okay. breast implant illness. Okay. No. Anything you want to elaborate on that after the last video at all? No, I think the thing is, is that uh, breast implant illness is an entity that we're studying and we're supporting the uh, American Society of Plastic Surgery uh, with our information, with our implants, and I've maintained clinical research uh, throughout my whole career and continue to do so. Currently, though, we don't have the answer to that question. Yeah, I think it's something that everyone is, it's a hot topic, everyone's asking questions about it, learning about it still, so I don't know if we really know everything yeah, about it yet. Yeah, we don't. So, um, okay, the last question I had was, uh, what is the best type? This is a pretty vague question, but someone said, what's the best type? So I'm assuming, I'm not sure if they meant brand, if they meant silicone, saline, gummy bear, whatever, but they said, what's the best type? So just to answer that in the way that you wow. want to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that can go a number of different directions. I think that we have, we're fortunate in this practice that we have a really good relationship with all the implant manufacturers. We get implants that are on their, on their pamphlets and off their pamphlets, meaning that they're being approved uh, pretty quickly. So having said that, I think the fifth generation gummy bear implants are by far the best. And they're the best for a number of reasons. One, best feeling, strongest implant, least amount of rippling, least amount of deflation risk, uh, lifetime warranty for deflation. Uh, warranty for contracture. None of that existed, uh, you know, five, eight, ten years ago for the saline implants, right. or for that matter, the fourth generation gel implants. Okay. They had warranties, but not that way. It was dis it was really just deflation for ten years, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, and then finally, it's a one breast feel. So if you have a natural appearing breast, um, I love the gummy bear fifth generation. I preferably use the Sientra implants. And then I, uh, I use also the other two uh, implant manufacturers as well. Okay, awesome. So there you go. And then I had one other person, this was my question I got submitted for this interview, but a couple people kind of questioned what we had last time we talked about the recovery time. Yeah. Like, no way, there's no way that it's that quick. Like you said, they would say. Um, right. Me, myself being like, dang it, why didn't I work out for eight months or uh, eight weeks right after I got mine last year? Um, is that, is it safe? Is it truly safe to work out or get some type of movement going two days later? Tell me about that. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, I usually have them. Yeah. 
I mean, you can do it's your not... lower extremity stuff. Yeah. I don't expect you to do any upper extremity. And then within a couple of weeks, like I had one woman that we did uh, exchange on. I mean, she's she was actually teaching yoga yesterday, and that was two weeks ago. So that's not uncommon. So a lot of us, I think, will kind of be scared or like nurse it maybe a little bit just because you're afraid of something coming out of place. But really, it's probably better for you to go ahead and start the healing process to get some blood flow. Right? To totally. Right. Totally. I'm all about like getting back to your routine. Mm -hmm. I don't expect you to do like the full blown, you know, CrossFit workout or, you know, do some heavy lifting. But you need to get back there and you'll feel better. Yeah. And also, like I said, I think it's not sick. In my right? mind, I feel like kind of expedite the healing process a little bit. Oh, it definitely yeah. does. Okay. Anything else you want to add today? Or no, anything? I'm happy to, to do this anytime with you, Lauren. Right, I, awesome. like to, I think that as we, you know, tell a story about how great breast augmentation is, because I think you know, it right can now, be. It can be. Honestly, it's helped. Right. I know so many people whose lives have improved and changed just not just confidence, but all a slew of other reasons. So I don't want it to get a bad rap and like you're about to say, I think. Yes. No, I totally, yeah. I totally agree with you. <laughs> yeah. No. So maybe we can, I don't know, we'll dive into things a little bit deeper. Or we'll go on some other journeys together and stuff. But guys, keep your questions coming. This is really great. So thank you so much thank for you. today. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. So.